Good morning, everybody. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Great to see all of you this weekend. Um, I have just a few announcements. Uh, we are following the Michigan and CDC mass guidelines. However, I ask that you keep in mind that we have some youth and littles who are not vaccinated or fully vaccinated, so please be mindful of that. And if you're around them, please put a mask on. Um, for myself, uh, if I'm going to be six feet or further from someone, I'm not wearing a mask, but if we're in close contact, I am choosing to do so. So that's my preference. So if you see me without a mask, kindly speak to me from afar because I love talking to you. So um, just to put that out there for everyone. Um, this is one of my favorite days in the church year where we get to say congratulations to our graduates. And we all know that it's been a really rough year and a half or so, um, so they deserve a special congrats. So uh, we'll start with our first slide there, please, Steve, if you would click for me. Um, the first graduate we celebrate is Miles Riddell, who's the grandson of Steve and Jan Alling, who's graduating from Concordia University, Ann Arbor, with a science of entrepreneurship and sports and entertainment business degree. I'm not gonna say that again real fast because that's a toughie. Um, and during his time at Concordia, Miles was on the lacrosse team. So congrats to him and his family for that. Next, we have Jennifer Stofflett, who is the daughter of Kevin and Joan Stofflett. Graduated from Oakland University, summa cum laude. She has a BS in general management with a double minor in marketing and entrepreneurship. She's going to continue to be a manager and a staff supervisor um, at a local business and continuing her education for cosmetology. She wants to own and um, open and own her own hair salon. So that's pretty exciting. Then our next slide is our very own Connor McKenzie, who's the son of Mike and Darcy, graduating from Armada High School at the top of his class. Congrats, Connor. Good stuff. Are you done with classes yet or almost? Almost. How many more days? Five days. Those are the longest five days of your school career ever. But you'll get there, I promise. Um, so Connor's pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering in the Honors College at Michigan State. And he'll have a message for you here shortly that he recorded. And then we have Emmy Roger, who we're also very proud of, daughter of Clint and Aaron, graduating from Romeo High School with high honors, which is pretty exciting. She's heading off to Lord's University in Ohio to play soccer while working on a major in psych and a minor in criminal justice with plans of continuing her education to get her doctoral in psychology. Wow, goals. Hashtag goals, that's awesome. So congrats to Emmy, we're very excited. How many more days, Emmy? Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, okay, two, you can make it, I promise. That's like double long for Connors. Oh, girl, awesome for you, congratulations. So we have um, a couple of videos for those, from those folks here in just a second. And also, I believe we have some other graduates who have not submitted their things yet. So as those come in, we will play those as well. Um, I believe, Steve, if you hit the button, Connor on the video should start talking. Hi, Seth John family. My name is Connor McKenzie, and I'm graduating from Armada High School. Next year, I plan to attend the Michigan State Honors College to study mechanical engineering. And I would just like to thank all of you for the help and support over the years. Hooray! Awesome, awesome. And then Emmy. Hi, my name is Emmy Roger. I'm graduating from Romeo High School. I'm planning on playing soccer at Lords University. I'm going to major in psychology and minor in criminal justice. And I'm planning on getting my doctorate in psychology. Thank you. So congrats to all of our graduates. We're so excited for them. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, a few other announcements for you. And if it starts feeling like one of those really long commercial breaks in your movie on one of those TV stations, I'm sorry, we'll get through. Uh, we have our outside games today for families and friends that wanna come from four till six. I understand the weather's supposed to be pretty nice from the last report I saw. Um, we'll have games and food and time together, so please come um, and check it out. Also, we are in need of people to sign up for items to donate to the Samaritan House. And how that's going to work um, is you will collect items that we have a list of or things that you know that they need. 
and you'll put them on your porch on the 23rd. And our youth from high school and middle school are going to drive around scavenger hunt style to pick them up. So you can get visited from members of our church and their friends and whoever they bring to help with their scavenger hunt, but also to help Samaritan House as well. So you can see kids that you know and kids you don't know and anything in between. So please, um, if you can do that, you can contact the office to sign up or you can go to Sign Up Genius to do it or you can talk to Pastor Linda and she will be more than happy to help you out with that as well. And we do have lots of opportunities uh, to help out Samaritan House that are in your bulletin. This is our month to collect things for them. So if for whatever reason you can't do the scavenger hunt, feel free to bring them into the church and we'll take them all in together. Ah, this is also the last chance for the chances for the cornhole boards. Uh, you can buy those chances up through the second service on Sunday next week, and the drawing will be after church, and that proceeds will help our 150th anniversary committee. And then two more really exciting announcements. Oh, this is great. So graduation, and I get to announce the birth of two babies not related to each other. So Charlotte Rose is the great-granddaughter of Steve and Jan Alling. She was born on Thursday. And Brady Cole, who is the grandson of Ron Wiersberg, was born Friday night. So he's got a really cute baby picture if you want to see it. It's awesome. Cheeks, every, oh, awesome. So pretty exciting news all the way around this spring. Are there other announcements for the good of the cause? All right. Then seeing none, we'll share the peace with one another using no contact. And we do that with sign language. Now, I challenged Saturday night to teach me how to do it because I've done it so many times. Anybody want to teach me how? Uh, okay. So you put your hands together in the shape of a crisscross and you spin them. Peace. And then you drop your hands down, knuckles together, thumbs forward, be with you. And the answer is, and also with you. I invite you to share that peace with one another using no contact. And you're allowed to talk to each other. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And I believe Pastor Linda has her children and youth message. Okay. I'd like to invite all those that are children or are feeling like a child today to come forward. Good morning, all. How is everybody? Doing okay? All right, all right. Well, I wanted to talk to you today um, about our scripture uh, that's in John 17, but I, I want to say a couple things first. I'm new here, so you're new to me. And um, when we're in a church community, we get to know each other. We want to be supportive and we kind of want to be friends so that we know what, what each other needs and we celebrate things like graduations and um, all of those great things together, birthdays and anniversaries that are listed in, in our newsletter. So if you would this morning, because I know we, some of you have done this, um, tell me, if you would, one thing about you that, that makes you you. Could you do that? We'll start with Lily. Lucy. I knew it was an L. Um, I like Alright, but you like to play soccer, basketball, and softball. Paul, what about you? Mm 
You like to watch sports. Paul's a lot of fun. I like Paul. Coco, Bella. Okay, Coco, tell me one thing about you. Tell us one. Okay, so cheer and track. Gotcha. Painting and Michael Jackson. Awesome. Well, I'm going to share something about myself is my, my fun thing to do that I've always done is run. That's like my, my passion. And so I always love to buy new running shoes. Why are we talking about this? Seems a little crazy this morning, but it's, we want to get to know each other. So the reason is in our scripture this morning, um, which is John 17, Jesus is writing a letter to his disciples. And um, in, in some of the footnotes in my Bible, it says, um, it's not a letter, it's a prayer. It says a prayer for friends um, that Jesus was writing, and his friends were the disciples. And he could write this letter to his friends, his disciples, because he knew them so well. And he knew them really well, and he was reminding them that he had shared and taught about God's love with them, and he was asking them to go on into the world and do the same thing. And, you know, I was thinking about this scripture and how much Jesus loves us, how much Jesus loved his disciples, but they probably spent a lot of time together. We know that they ate together. When you guys eat meals at home or picnics, usually it's a lot of fun and a lot of talking, and you get to know each other and you learn how to live together and love each other. So I was just thinking about how, how this prayer that Jesus was writing to his disciples was about a relationship, and it was about love, and it was about reminding them that they had, had special things about them that they knew about God to go out in the world to share. So I wanted to just say thank you um, for, for sharing this morning. I've gotten to know some of you more than others along the way already, and I value that. That relationship is important to me, and those relationships are important to God. So this is, um, when I made my, the video that I shared this week for Sunday School, um, Part of the message was, it's really silly, it was about a horse. I'm going to give you, because that's what friends do, sometimes they give people things, I'm going to give you a picture of my horse. Isn't this silly? Um, sorry, I didn't print them out in color. Um, and I know it looks a little juvenile, but you could make one and remember about your special friends that you have and how much Jesus loves you and is your friend too. Um, or you could take it home and say, that's really goofy, why did Pastor Linda give me that? But um, let's pray together. Can we do that? All right. Loving God, we thank you for these young people. We thank you for this church. We thank you for our graduates, for um, Emmy and for Connor that are here this morning. And we thank you for those relationships that you have been building um, from day one, since their baptism, that you have been bringing them into the fold and that you love us so much and you see the good in us so much that you challenge us to go out into the world and share your love with others. Bless these young people, bless our graduates today, um, that they will remember how much they're loved and how wonderful and awesome that they are um, ordained by you to do good things. In Jesus' name, we pray and the people of God said together, amen. Awesome, thanks guys. Who would like you're running away. Run away. Give it to your nearest kindergartner in your, or make one and put it in your room and remember how special you are in Jesus. All right. Empty hands 
held high such small sacrifice if not joined with my life i sing in vain tonight may the words i say and the things i do make my life song sing bring a smile Let my life song sing to you. Let my life song sing to you. I want to sign your name to the end of this day, knowing that my heart was true. Let my life song sing to you. Lord, I give my life a living sacrifice to reach a world in need, to be your hands and feet. So may the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing, bring a smile. Let my life song sing to you. Let my life song sing to you. I want to sign your name to the end of this day, knowing that my heart was true. Let my life song sing to you. Thank you, Darcy and Karen. Our first reading this day is from the first chapter of Acts, beginning with the 15th verse. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled 
which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed too, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the fifth chapter of the first book of John, beginning with the ninth verse. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to the 17th chapter of St. John, beginning with the sixth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus is praying for the disciples. And it's the last prayer that the disciples actually hear him pray. 
Earlier when Jesus prayed, let, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but your will be done, the disciples had fallen asleep. And when Jesus cries out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The disciples had forsaken him, fearing for their own safety. And the fact that they couldn't be there for Jesus makes this prayer in John 17 all the more sorrowful and meaningful. You see, the disciples had spent a lot of time learning from Jesus, how he ministered to others so that they would know how best to minister to people they encountered, learning from Jesus' examples of caring for others, healing them, and praying. You see, Jesus had an intimate relationship with God, and this night, the last night after he shared supper with his beloved disciples, Jesus here isn't teaching them to pray, but instead he's praying for those disciples to that God that he is so intimately related to and with. You see, when someone is on their deathbed, it's common for folks who are around them at that time to hang on to that person's last words. Whatever those might be, you hang on to them. And other times when someone dies suddenly or unexpectedly, it's common for people to wish they had just that one more conversation with their loved one so that you can hold on to those words forever. And sometimes we have those conversations in our minds and our hearts of, if I could only see so-and-so one more time, here's what I would like to tell them. Or here's what I would like to hear from them. Now, I imagine the disciples in this moment didn't know that Jesus was saying what might be his final words around them at this Last Supper. And his words for them while they're there are a prayer directed toward God on their behalf. You see, Jesus knew that this was his time of his final hours. And he prays to God, I am no longer in this world but they are. Imagine how confused that made the disciples to hear these words. And they probably had no idea of how serious these words were. And if they did, surely they would have hung on to every single one as he prayed. You see, Jesus' words underline a problem here. Jesus is no longer in the world, but we are. And the world that the disciples were in at that moment took on a whole different meaning for them because Jesus is no longer in the world. He's leaving the disciples to be in a world where he was not going to be very soon in human form. Can't we relate to that feeling too? That feeling in, in our world right now, a world where we don't have the physical body of Jesus here in human form among us, how often we desire that we could spend time with him in the here and the now to see and feel and experience his ministry firsthand. Right? I've decided I want to have a, a meal with him, like a 10-course like a meal, because then I could drag out the time a lot longer to experience what, he, what it is that he would have to say, what wisdom he would give me if he would be so kind to do so. To hear what prayers he might offer on my behalf, what healing he might give me that I don't even know I need, or the prayers that he would offer for you or for others on their behalf. And you see, Jesus' body, his human lifetime, is not here with us. But then this is where things take a little bit of a spin because in the sense that his body is not here, we are, and that's our calling to be the body of Christ. One of my favorite mystics, and yes, in seminary I took a class on the mystics and it was fantastic, Teresa of Avila. She writes, Christ has no body on earth but yours. No hands but yours. No feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ looks out on a hurting world. Yours are the feet with which he goes about doing good. 
Yours are the hands with which he is to bless now. Side note, the song that you heard Darcy sing earlier, she and I did not coordinate. (laughs) But she talked about being the body of Christ in those lyrics. It's important. Teresa of Avila even gets it. Jesus knew it too. Jesus trusted the disciples to be the body of Christ when he had no body here on earth. And he trusts us too with his teachings to model his ministry as best as we can to others, to be an active part of the body of Christ. We don't have the power of miracles in our bodies like he did. I can't calm a storm. I can't calm the waters. I can't change water into wine. I can't put my hands on and heal somebody. Probably neither can you. And if you can, show me because I really want to see that. But I've not met anyone who can. And you see, we're human. We're mere human. We're not God human like Jesus was. And Jesus knows that. He knows that we're flawed individuals in all of our humanness who sin when we fall away from what God would hope for us. He knows we get tired. He knows we get stressed. He knows we get frustrated. It's enough to make a person wonder why Jesus didn't leave his future presence here on earth with people, somebody, something more capable and less flawed than we are. And yet, Jesus in all of his wonderfulness knew what the world needed. In his prayer, he prays, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world. The disciples and the we, we are all the them. Protect them from the evil one. And you see, we do belong to this world. We're so much in the world, head to toe, from the tops of our heads to the bottoms of our feet and everything in between. We are born into this world, and we live our human lives here as faithfully as we can until we too will die and go on into God's eternal kingdom, the church triumphant. When I was in high school, some <clears throat> years ago, there was a song that came out that was sung by a lot of musical artists, and I'm going to be frank, and it's going to be recorded, and you're going to know that I just really did not like the song, and I still don't. You want to know what it is? Even if you don't, I'm going to tell you. We are the world. We are the world, we are the children. Please. My high school self did not like that song because it seemed to me at the time and now that the song missed the boat because we are the world to me sounds like it's all about the we. We are the world. Us. Really? I don't know, it just seems really self-centered. And I remember to add insult to injury because apparently it was all about me, not really. The class voted on that for our class song. (sighs) And I know the people who voted on it did a fabulous job. Kudos to them, but it's not what I would have picked and that's okay. And you see, my argument isn't that we aren't the world, we're in the world. We're in the world, and you see, we're here to be little Christ to others that we encounter as we share with those around us what Jesus teaches us, to love one another, to care for one another, to reach out and pray for others, and to share what we have and not keep it just for ourselves, being of the world. We have to be honest. We are of the world, too. No matter how hard we try, there's always a piece or two here and there of ourselves that we can't seem to remove. So therefore, we're in and of the world at the same time. Jesus prays in John 17, be in the world, but not of the world. He didn't direct his words to the disciples. 
He was talking to God, praying to God. And no matter how faithfully we pray to God about this in and not ofness, we have to confess that we just can't get it done to the extent that we should. But we can give it to one who can, Jesus. We can put ourselves at the foot of the cross, express our deepest desire to be in and not of the world. And you see also in that prayer, Jesus was praying for the disciples, but on a much bigger note, he was praying for all of us as the church. Now, we're going to talk about being sanctified. To be sanctified means to be holy. And, well, we're not very holy, but we can pray. Another of my favorites, St. Augustine, said, whenever I have described the church as being without spot or wrinkle, I have not intended to imply it was like this already, but that it should prepare itself to be without spot or wrinkle when the church, too, will appear in glory." End quote. So we will be of the world in our hope-filled, faithful selves until we are no longer in the world. So what do we do in the meantime? Jesus tells us, he prayed one more thing, sanctify them in truth. Make them holy in truth. Now, holy, holiness, if you think about it, at least in my head, it can feel kind of arrogant or pompous, like some inflexible relic uh, from our religious past, very holy, with not a lot of room to move. But you see, as one theologian says, lots of Christians, I'm quoting, lots of Christians do believe that faith should impinge on the real world and change us. But we focused almost exclusively on missions. We'll give a cup of water to the thirsty. We'll serve food at the shelter. We'll send teams overseas to places like Haiti. We'll contribute to a fund for homeless children. All very good, except atheists do similar things. And maybe Jesus was praying for the disciples to be holy, not do-gooders, but holy in their souls, in the privacy of their minds, and in their habits out in the world, end quote. Jesus prayed the words in, not of the world, and also sanctify them in truth. Be the heart, the mind, the hands, the feet of Jesus. Our human selves can love and we can be the church, the hands and feet of Jesus for others in a world wherever and whenever we are. We can share Christ's love and tell people time and again that they are loved. We can say in this place, wherever this place is, Christ is loved and you are loved. And we can even say that to ourselves in the mirror when we need to hear it the most. We can reach out to those who are wounded as we know ourselves what it feels like to be wounded and it is to be wounded and we can pray just as Jesus prayed for the disciples with them in that room where they could see and hear and experience his prayers on their behalf to God. You see Jesus there in that moment is praying for them but also for us, that future church, those of us who live in our present and current time and that is the truth that makes us holy, that sanctifies, that's our vocation in the world that we live in, and maybe not so much as of what we might be. Amen. For our prayers this morning, I would like to take names from the congregation that they would uh, like to have lifted this morning during our prayers. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. We continue to pray for Janet, Don, Sandy, Ralph, Carmela, Lori, and the family of Dorothy Graham, and all those named aloud whom we love and hold close in our hearts. Grant your healing care to all those in need. Give them noticeable signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God. Guiding Lord, we ask you now for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates, Jennifer, Emmy, Miles, and Connor, as they celebrate with family and friends this new milestone in their lives. Walk with them in faith and hope, guided by your light into their next journey. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Protecting Lord, it has been a long, difficult struggle, and we have experienced so much hardship during this pandemic. As we prepare to walk into the future, we pray for the new normal to come. May our hearts be unified in you more than ever. May the tender moments of seeing someone again in person be memorable and treasured. Bless our pastor, church council, office and janitorial staff who serve in our church as they have made careful decisions and adjustments all along the way. Help us to come out of this pandemic to be more mindful of how we can help one another and how we can serve you well. We thank you that no matter how dark the night may get, there is the hope of the dawn to come. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you now, all now and forever. Amen. Now, before we sing the hymn, may we go in peace and remember that Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.